We recently finished building this ported custom subwoofer enclosure for this beast of a subwoofer, the JL Audio 13W7. Here on the channel, we built the box, we added some custom template work, and we used a special speaker enclosure paint and applied upholstery. But now we need to hear, how does this sound and how does it perform? In this video, I'm gonna show you some measurement checks that we can perform, how we can use a DSP to improve subwoofer performance, and we are going to do an SPL measurement and a sound test. Really quick, before we get into the content, I do wanna say a quick thank you to our sponsor for this episode, Crutchfield. I don't know about you, but when I buy car audio gear online, I want to get it fast. If you've watched my videos before, you know that long before I ever even started the channel, I've been using Crutchfield to get car audio gear. That's because on their website, I can enter my vehicle details and easily see exactly what fits. But on top of this, they also ship anywhere in the contiguous USA with two-day shipping. And any order over $35 ships free. Which, let's be real, almost any car audio gear purchase is going to be over that value. If you're new to Crutchfield, check out the link down in the video description that can get you some instant savings just for signing up and making an account. And if you've shopped with them before, don't forget to use that link down below for the CAF fan discount. All right, so let's get into our subwoofer enclosure testing. And the vehicle we are inside of right here is a Jeep Wrangler. Powering the 13W7 is this guy right here, the JL Audio VX1000 1i. This amplifier is perfect for powering the subwoofer as its power rating sits right in the middle near the optimum range. Now off camera, I've done all of the initial setup for this amplifier, setting the gain correctly and the crossovers. If you guys wanna learn more about that process, check out my past video up in the corner of the screen. In this video, we're gonna be focused more on the advanced test and DSP tuning that we need to do to make this subwoofer sound its best. And to to start our testing process, we're gonna be using a polarity test tool. I have a USB drive with a polarity test tone that we're gonna be able to play on the system. And what these tools do is allow us to verify that the wiring is correct polarity for our subwoofers and speakers. So I've currently got the speaker polarity test track playing in the background. You're gonna be able to hear kind of like a popping noise. There it was right there. And all we have to do is just take our tool and hold it close to our speaker. In this case, we're looking at the mid bass driver here installed into the dash. And you can see that green light means that we have the correct polarity. In fact, I shouldn't say the correct polarity because what really matters is that the polarity is the same between all of our speakers. So if we come back to our subwoofer, you can see the subwoofer moving and you can see that we have the correct polarity. Now, whenever I show the polarity test tools, I always get the question, hey, why not use a nine volt or a double A or a triple A battery and just connect it to the speaker and just watch which direction it goes in order to identify polarity. A nine volt battery can be used. You would basically connect it to the speaker inputs on the subwoofer enclosure here and just make sure that the subwoofer is going the correct direction. But there are some difficulties with using a nine volt battery to do polarity testing. As an example, right now I have the install all buttoned up. I don't wanna have to somehow be X accessing those speaker wires on the back of the speakers here or having to dig to my amplifier which is located under the seat. There's also the fact that many head units give you the ability to change some of the polarity settings and if you potentially did any of the head unit wiring the wrong way or if any of the wiring anywhere in the signal path is somehow out of polarity you're not going to know if you're only checking the polarity at the speaker with a 9 volt battery. So really the best way to make sure everything is correct all the way through the signal path is to to use a tool like this and it definitely gives you a lot of time savings which hey that's the point of most tools. Now next up, I wanna do an impedance measurement of our subwoofer enclosure, which will allow us to determine the port tuning frequency. And to do that, we're gonna be using the JL Audio Max. If you watched my last video, that's why I custom made this set of measurement probes that have a tip ring sleeve connector here, a TRS connector that can plug in right here on the Max and allow us to do our impedance measurement. In the vehicle, I'm going to disconnect the speaker wire from the subwoofer enclosure and I'm going to connect these to that speaker terminal on the subwoofer enclosure instead. So you can see I've disconnected the subwoofer from the system as of right now the only thing that's connected to be able to play the subwoofer is the max. So I've got the max connected let's hop on over here to the tuning cart. There we go, that's better. So I've got JL Audio's Tune 4 program loaded up here. And right now you can see that up in the upper corner here, I've chose impedance. And that's obviously because we're doing an impedance measurement. What is an impedance measurement? Basically we are measuring resistance 
along an AC signal. So in layman's terms, we're gonna see the resistance of the subwoofer at all these different frequencies. Up here, I'm gonna choose my settings and I'm gonna go to measurement setup and I'm gonna turn on the TF1 impedance mode. Close that dialog box and up here, I'm going to start playing pink periodic noise. So here we are taking a look at our impedance measurement. And if we take a closer look, we wanna target this area between these two peaks. We wanna go all the way down in this valley. Wherever this valley lines up is the tuning frequency of our ported subwoofer enclosure. And in this case, we're right at 30 Hertz, which was our target goal. Now for the next step of the testing process, I wanna get some RTA measurements of the performance of this subwoofer. To do this, I'm using the Max's five microphone array in the listening position of the vehicle. I'll be feeding a signal out of the Max into the car audio system using this adapter wire here. All right, so I'm back here in Tune 4 again, and this time we are still connected to the Max, but we have the Max connected to our DSP amplifier because we're gonna be changing the settings on the DSP amplifier. So I'm gonna to need to play some pink periodic noise, so you're gonna be able to hear this in the background. So this is an RTA, a real-time analyzer, probably something that you're familiar with if you've seen a tuning process before. And what we wanna focus on first is setting our time alignment. So we're going to switch to Lin IR, and we're going to be looking at impulse response of each of these channels. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute everything except for the subwoofer. So right now I'm looking at an impulse response measurement, and this is the actual waveform coming from the subwoofer. So the reason it goes up like this first is because we have correct polarity currently on this channel. If I were to change the polarity, you're gonna see that that waveform goes down first and then up. So when we're setting our time alignment, I'm able to determine that polarity is correct again, so I really didn't need to do that initial step if I'm using this process here. We're gonna switch polarity back so that our waveform is going up first. And you can see that I've already inserted a reference delay of 13 milliseconds. And the point of that is I want this line to be right where this waveform starts to go up. Just as an example, let's change this value to 10. You can see that that would be a little bit earlier. I want my reference delay to be right when that waveform starts. In fact, we might be able to go up. Eh, let's go back just a little bit. So a 13.02. So the next step here is I've unmuted my right mid bass driver and I wanna get this time aligned at that same 13.02 reference value. So in order to do that, I'm going to click find delay and then I'm going to insert the delta Zoom out a little bit here. Again, my goal is for right where this starts rising up for that to be on this 13.02 value. So let's add in just a bit more additional delay to shift that over. Let's go back slightly. So there we go. And again, just remember, because this response goes up first, we know that the polarity is correct. Let me mess it up intentionally really quick for you guys. See how it goes down. That's not what we want. We want everything in the same polarity. So I'm gonna have to do this to all the speakers in my system, but it's a pretty quick process. The reason that time alignment is so important is it makes sure that all these speakers are playing together in phase at our listening position, which allows us to fully optimize the sound. Now let's focus on the response of our subwoofer. Now you guys are probably used to seeing an RTA like this with bars. I like to look at it in lines mode like this. It's just a little bit more clean looking. And you can see that right now, the only channel that is playing is the subwoofer. So here in the software, we wanna turn on our EQ controls for our subwoofer channel. And you can also see that I've turned on the targets mode. So here in purple, you can see our target curve for where we want this subwoofer enclosure to play. Now it's worth noting that the subwoofer box is currently in a vehicle, so the response that you are seeing is not the anechoic response. This is the response of it in the vehicle, and the vehicle is going to have an impact on how the subwoofer plays. This is why we see these peaks and valleys, and this is also the reason that it's valuable to have a digital signal processor even on your subwoofer channels. Now when it comes to applying an EQ, I could come in here and manually adjust these parametric EQ bands to try to get my measured response closer to the target. But instead, I'm going to let the software work its magic. I'm gonna click the auto set EQ button and it's going to use all the bands that it needs in order to get our target curved matched up with our actual measured performance. If I need to, I can bring in some of the unused bands here and I wanna narrow the Q value on this. So I'm gonna right click and drag up so that I impact a smaller range of frequencies there. And I know people are always concerned about boosting when it comes to EQ, but look at the orange here. You can see that the majority of the information here 
the majority of that energy is being reduced so we don't have to be so concerned with adding a boost here because we're still below this median point if you will so right now i notice that there's a little bit of a dip in this range so i can use this eq band to bring some of that information back in and more better match our target curve there so very nice our response matches our target really well now you may have noticed that we removed a lot of energy from this here and this is because with this tune we're going for more of a sound quality performance where we match the target curve of the rest of the speaker's performance here and this subwoofer can definitely provide a ton of output so yes in a way we have somewhat nerfed that output but Keep in mind that you can always set up multiple presets. So if you want a preset that is more geared towards loud output, you could have where this reduction isn't quite as much. You could even adjust your target curve so that your target curve is raised quite considerably. And then when you do the EQ to match that higher target curve, it's not going to remove as much energy. So after we've done all of our EQ and got this to match our target curve, we do want to take a look at the phase relationship between our subwoofers and our mid-bass drivers. To do that, I'm going to go in here and go to the phase tab and I'm going to hide some of this existing stuff here. And right now we are looking at the phase performance of the subwoofers, but I want to start with taking a look at the phase performance of the left mid bass speaker. It's at this point in the process that we're really going to start to time align everything. We did that impulse measurement before, but us analyzing the phase right now is going to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. So I want to capture this trace here. So I'm going to hit space bar and I'm going to name this the left mid bass. So now you can kind of see it ghosted in the background there. If I turn this off, that's that yellow trace that we just captured. And now I want to turn on the right mid bass. Now, ideally we should see these red and yellow lines be as close to each other as possible. And do keep in mind that for a mid bass speaker, we're going to want to focus on the phase relationship within the pass band that the mid bass speaker is actually playing. So I'm mainly going to focus on this area here and I'm going to remove a little bit of delay from this front right mid bass speaker and see how those lines are coming closer to each other. This is going to make sure that these two speakers are now going to be perfectly in phase with one another. So I got rid of that previous measurement and now I want to capture a trace with both of my mid bass drivers playing. So we'll just say both mid bass. If I mute those, you can see that blue measurement that we captured, and now I'm going to unmute the subwoofer. And where I want to focus here is the transition point of the subwoofer crossover to the mid bass crossover. So we're really looking in this range here. We want everything to be nice and aligned. Understanding the phase relationship between different speakers is really powerful and it allows you to solve some big issues that you might see. As an example here, here is our response of the subwoofer summed currently with the mid bass speakers playing as well. And I want to intentionally mess up the subwoofers here. Watch in this area here, the crossover point between the two. Watch what happens if I invert the polarity on the subwoofer channels. Watch as this range in here slowly drops out. And I can refresh my measurement here. And you can see now we have this huge null between the subwoofer and the mid bass driver. You can see that with the polarity inverted right now, we are massively out of phase. Our red line does not line up with our blue line at all. But if we go back to our RTA here and I change the polarity back to the way it should be on the subwoofer channel, and I'm just going to do a quick update on my measured response here, turn on the mid bass drivers, update our measurement there. You can see now we once again have a good summation. So for a full tune, we would continue that process until everything matches up to our target curve. If you guys wanna see a full detailed video I did on the full tuning process, I have that linked up in the corner of the screen for you guys as well. The next thing we need to do is an SPL test. Now because the Max has a limit on the SPL level that the microphones are designed to read, we're gonna be using a true SPL microphone for this with the TermLab Magnum. Now a quick disclaimer, I want to remind everyone out there that this is not meant to be an SPL focused system. If this was meant to set as high an SPL score as possible, I would have tuned the enclosure a lot higher in order to maximize that energy. I would have powered this with a 1500 watt RMS amplifier. Overall, I would have designed this with the intent of being an SPL system, but that's not what it's meant to be. It's meant to be an amazing sounding subwoofer system 
that also just happens to get down. Here we go. Oh, oh my goodness. 146.8. Woo! So next up, let's do a little bit of a sound test. Now, first off, I have to play royalty-free music in order to avoid copyright. And as always, a little bit of a disclaimer here. Remember that what you are hearing is your device or speakers playing the music. You're not actually sitting here in the vehicle hearing this system. You're really hearing my system recorded through a microphone and then played back by your system. But nevertheless, I know you guys like these sound tests, so one more reminder here. Remember that I have the subwoofer intentionally level matched to play well with the rest of the speakers in this system. If I just wanted to completely blow out the microphone up here, I could easily do so, but we're looking for more of a sound quality, good sounding subwoofer based performance. So the first track we're going to be playing is called Half Measures. Next up, more of a bass track called Echoes. And just to give you guys a quick taste, this is what it sounds like if we go full tilt boogie with the bass. So my overall impression of the 13W7, holy cow, this subwoofer is awesome. I've wanted one of these subwoofers ever since I first started learning to drive a car and I am so excited to finally have my hands on one. The W7 makes solid, impactful bass that you can feel in your soul. In particular, the low end extension is incredible. The amount of pressure it can create in a cabin, even digging down deep, is just impressive. But not only does this subwoofer get loud, it also sounds extremely accurate and good while it's doing it. If you want to make full use of the W7, I would recommend having a DSP as part of your system that way you can have two different tunes one for musically accurate bass and one to just go nuts so there you have it guys if you guys would like to catch some of my other subwoofer enclosure builds be sure to check out the full playlist here on the channel don't forget, next time you're ordering car audio gear and you want to get it fast, be sure to check out our sponsor, Crutchfield. You guys can learn more and get a special offer to help you save at the links down in the video description. A big thanks to Crutchfield along with Jerry, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. And thank you for tuning in and watching.